Hello and welcome back to week two of the World Cup of Pokemon BGC, hosted by Victory Road and sponsored by Elgato. I'm still going to be Jamie Boyd, and this time I'm going to be joined by Lou Cromi, and we're going to be jumping into a game between Austria and Argentina. Yeah, glad to see that you're not going anywhere, Jamie. You are still the Jamie Voigt, and it is lovely to commentate with you again on this next week of VGC action. So far, the games have been amazing. It's been great to be able to sort of sit back and spectate them a little bit. Yeah, we had an absolutely wonderful game coming out from the previous game in Brazil versus Japan. Uh, so hopefully we're going to be having some extra uh, extra games for you uh, that's going to be as good as coming out mm -hmm. from Austria and Argentina. Uh, we're going to be able to jump into uh, the standings currently between Austria and Argentina. It looks like only one game has been played so far, so Argentina are taking the lead here. Yep, still all to play for here. Very early days in this particular country matchup. Um, so we haven't had a big reveal of teams as of yet to kind of have a dive through. But interesting, um, once again, to kind of see the Nile Ego coming to the forefront, a Pokemon that we're starting to see more and more. You know, again, having a special attacker on the team is always great when you are in that sea of Intimidate. And Cineral does seem to be everywhere. Um, so again, classic Firewater Grass calls coming through with that kind of Rillaboom, Incineroar, and Suicune. I know you'll be happy to see the Suicune on there as well, Jamie. <laughs> Yes, definitely. A nice shake up from the rep strike Urshifu that we see so often. Mm -hmm. uh, so now we can move on to the players that we are going to be featuring uh, in this game here. We're going to be starting off with Austria and Christian and going to be rocking in a Veltal here. Yeah, I'd love to see the Aveltal coming into the fray. I think when Series 10 first dropped, Xerneas was one of the Pokemon that I think a lot of people would go to straight away. It's had a lot of utility through a lot of restricted formats. So it's nice to see the Aveltal coming through here. Obviously, if it does come up against a Xerneas matchup, Christian is going to have to find a way to be able to play around it. But again, good to see Pokemon coming through like that Nihiligo. I really want to see it get up to a few tricks. Yes, Nihiligo is definitely a Pokemon that... that really puts on a lot of pressure onto the common Pokemon like the Rillaboom and the and the Incineroar that we can see that on Christian's side of the field as well. Uh, so we'll have to see if that's going to be coming into play for Christian. Uh, but we can now have a look at Sergio's team. Going to be rocking that classic Torn Ogre team. Uh, so going to be running the Kyogre with the Serena so that you can stop all those priority attacks. And a Regieleki, which I know you're excited to see. So excited to see Reggie Alecki, let's be honest. But the other thing I love is the synergy on this team. Like you said, that classic kind of Kyogre with Tornado strategy where, you know, you can always go for that priority rain dance to reset the weather. But I think having Serena on the team is one of those other classics to making this duo into a trio. Because being able to switch in and have that Queenly Majesty stop Fake Out from getting in the way of setting up that rain um, or even a Tailwind, you know, it's just such a great Pokemon to come in and utilize its ability to support its teammates. Yeah, we're going to have to think of a new name for Tornoga to try and slap Serena somewhere in there, because it does seem like they are a trio <laughs> at this point. Uh, you do very mm. commonly see them together. Uh, but then do we need to get a, a name for Incineroar, Rillaboom, and Urshifu at that point? Probably not. So, oh, maybe Twitch chat can help us out with a few of those. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see some of your suggestions, maybe. See if they get picked up for the future. Uh, but now we can be jumping into this game uh, to see how these Pokemon are going to be able to perform. Yeah, looking forward to seeing what the leads are going to come out here. We can already see a little bit of a sneak peek here with that Aveltal coming out into the fray with the Rillaboom. And players have locked in very quickly. I think it was 15 seconds on each side oh, wow. there, really. Just picking their Pokemon. They know what they want to do here, Jamie. Yeah, they know their game plans. Uh, when, when you've got something like Tornado Skyoka, uh, you definitely need to know your game plan against that. So it looks like uh, the both players know exactly what they're going to do here. Only 15 seconds to decide their matchups. Well, jumping out into the fray, it's Kyogre Tornadoes. A fantastic combination, tried and tested. We'll see how it comes down to face against the Rillaboom and the Aveltal. Yeah, and, and Rillaboom is definitely one of those Pokemon that you do put onto your team to be able to have a good matchup against the opposing Kyogre, because uh, you do threaten it down very heavily with the Grass-type attacks. But then this is always the awkward situation when you're facing down something like a Tornadoes and Kyogre. There is always the potential of that Serena just switching in at any point, putting a stop to any fake-outs that could come onto the Tornadoes to stop a Tailwind or an attacks coming out from the Kyogre, any of those Grassy Glides that could come out to try and pick up the Knockout on the Kyogre. Uh, so we'll have to see what's going to be coming out from that Rillaboom, whether you're scared of the Serena Serena switching. Evolve isn't too much. Even if the, the Serena comes in to, to block any kind of attacks from the Rogue Room, the Evolve is still spending, sitting on the seal very pretty. Yeah, it certainly is. And in comes that Serena. We're switching in for the Kyogre and Rillaboom. Not going to fall victim to this because, you know, wouldn't be able to go for a fake out on those grass type moves that would have gone into Kyogre. Serena's going to be able to take them reasonably well. So it's Nihiligo that joins for that Rillaboom. As Tornadoes goes for the Hurricane in the rain, it's going to be 100% accurate. Connects onto Nihiligo. Not very effective, but does indeed get that confusion. And that can always be a difficult thing to work around if you are the confused player. A Veltal could just jump up to the sky, go for that Oblivion Wing, straight down into the Serena. Does manage to catch on switching and does do 50% to that. Pokemon so 
If you're that Serena switching in, it's great, but actually it looks like Christian's been able to play around that reasonably well and now applying a lot of pressure to that Serena going forward. It definitely seems like Christian is experienced in this matchup. Uh, being able to switch in the Nile go on a potential water spout uh, that would have easily picked up the knockout. Really, really solid play, catching that hurricane from the 20th and getting some really good damage down onto the Serena with the Oblivion Wing as well. Doing pretty much exactly half, so going to be very close if it's going to be in range of another of one of those mm -hmm. oblivion wings uh, but you've managed to get your nile ego down and get to the opposing tornadoes and the serena that's definitely the position it wants to be in yeah and tornadoes going for the tailwind here boosting up the speed on sergio's side of the field serena does utilize the opportunity to go for a u-turn doesn't want to take another one of those oblivion wings get a little critical hit as well for good measure a little bit of payback for doing so much damage from the oblivion ring but this does give sergio the opportunity to bring in a pokemon from the back particularly now that tailwind has been set up and possibly do some really good damage. It could be that Kyogre returning to the fray and going for those water spouts, but if it does come back in, you have to worry about it taking damage. So I think Nihiligo is a really good option here for Sergio to bring it in. The birds are flying around Nihiligo on Christian's side, but can power through that confusion and going for the sludge bomb into the opposing Nihiligo. Really not going to deal too much damage here, but Nihiligo does sometimes run a Focus Sash, so it could potentially have broken that item. We have yet to determine where the Focus Sash may be on Sergio's side of the field, and Oblivion Wing doing barely anything to that Nihiligo. So great u-turn there from that serena getting in out of danger it seems like nihiligo is the pokemon to be the switch in here going to be able to take the hurricane pretty easily on the first turn and now the oblivion wing and the sludge bomb as well and yeah not really doing too much damage to either of the nihiligos and you are still facing down an opposing flying type so if you've got that meteor being ready to go or the power gems uh, you can definitely threaten down the opposing flying types and they can't do too much to stop your your opposing nihiligos but you've got the tailwind on the tornado side of the field so we know nihiligo on sergio's side is going to be going first uh, maybe if the available is carrying something like a sucker punch that could be doing some good damage to the nihiligo uh, but very commonly carrying all the special moves are not going to be a threat and down that Nihiligo too much. So definitely in a strong position for Sergio. Got the Tailwind going, so you know that you're going to be faster. Uh, you've got still got a confused Nihiligo on Christian's side of the field. Uh, so it's going to be up, up to those little birds to determine whether that's even attacking. And Avelta here is going to be switching into that Urshifu. Yeah, Tornado is looking pretty comfortable in this situation at the moment. The speed's on its side. Hurricane can be 100% accurate in that rain. And it catches the Urshfood, powers it right down to its Focus Sash. So great call there from Sergio. Unfortunately for Christian, that Urshifu is looking very, very precarious. And now it's gone by the double up from Sergio. And I really do like that play here. Targeting down into what was the Avelta, the Pokemon that was dealing, you know, decent damage across on Sergio's side of the field. It's also the restrictor for Christian. You want to eliminate that as quickly as possible. And not only do you get rid of the Urshifu, but you get the beast boost as well on your Nihiligo while also throwing the Nihiligo on Christian's side into confusion. I think the Nihiligo for Christian was devastated by that turn of events. It just had to hit itself for good merit. Yeah, that was, that was as good a turn as you could have hoped for if you were on Sergio's side of the field. Just picking up that knockout, even on the Sash Urshifu, uh, getting rid of that. So and now your Kyogre is freed up a little bit more uh, because that Urshifu would have been able to take a water spout, especially with that Focus Sash. And Rillaboom is going to be the Pokemon that's joining the field once again for Christian's side of the field. It uh, can put a stop to at least one of the attacks coming out from Tornius or Nihiligo. Uh, but if you go for the fake out into one of them, you just either take the Hurricane or the plus one Sludge Bomb at this point, which will... I, both of those attacks will do huge amounts of damage and really put that Rillaboom down very low in range of the water spouts in the future. As uh, the Nihiligo on the on Christian's side of the field not being able to get off an attack that turn means it's not able to get off an attack almost certainly into that Tornadus, uh, whether that's going to be a Meteor Beam or the, the Power Gem uh, to be, maybe bring it down to the Focus Sash or just pick up the Knockout at that point. Uh, whether it's carrying that focus sash or not so definitely still a very strong position for sergio especially the, with that night ego not being able to get off any attacks and getting your own beast boost on your own night ego yeah, and you can see that Christian was taking the seconds down, past 10 seconds there, really thinking through what to do. Serena joins the field for the Tornadus, wants to keep it in the back nice and safe, so it can go for a Tailwind a little bit later on, maybe help out that Kyogre towards the end game. as we know those Tailwind turns are ticking away. Avelthal will rejoin the field for Christian, as Nihiligo does go for that Sludge Bomb at plus one, does a decent chunk to that Avelthal, and Nihiligo, is it going to be able to power through? Yes, it does, can fire off a Sludge Bomb into the Serena that has just joined the field and will be able to pick up the KO against it, so at least... It's if you're that Rillaboom, you don't have to worry about Queenly Majesty. And Nihiligo on Christian's side gets a beast boost to match. And yeah, that really frees up the Rillaboom to be able to actually be able to counter the Kyogre now that the Serena has left the field. And both of these Nihiligos are definitely becoming a threat. Uh, being able to be good switch ins, being able to power up themselves with the beast boosts. Uh, definitely, definitely the stars of the show for this first game. 
And now if the Kyoka comes in, it will be able to get off at least one of those water spouts without the, the worry about the Rillaboom at least. Uh, maybe some Sucker Punches could still come out from the Evolve to be able to reduce the damage that can come out from the water spout. But really, this is the position that you want with your Kyoga. You want to be in Tailwind, you want to be at full HP. Uh, you want to just be outspeeding by the opposing Pokemon. Uh, you don't need to worry about the Rillaboom at all. So really, you just get to fire off your Water Spout at this point. Uh, if you go for a Protect uh, on, on both players' sides to stall out the Tailwind, you've got the potential of just switching out into the Tornadoes as well. So you can just set up the Tailwind once again for the future as well. You would have to sacrifice your Special Attack Boost on the Nihiligo as well. But then, at the same time, you could just leave the Nihiligo on the field, even if they stall out the Tailwind. Your Nihiligo is going to be outspeeding the, at least the opposing of Alphal, and would still be able to threaten down some really good damage with the Power Gem. So this is a really, really strong position for Sergio, and there's not too much stopping the Kyogre from going for that Water Spout. Well, Nihiligo is able to get the Protect on Christian's side of the field. This is the last turn of the Tailwind for Sergio, and Avelto just going to go for the Protect. So Christian stalling out this last remaining turn, and it looks like Sergio did not capitalize on predicting this and bringing in the Tornadoes from the back. But Kyogre just going to go for that Water Spout, revealing, of course, that it does indeed have that move, to nobody's surprise. Um, so really, not a lot of damage coming around here, but critically, Rain is over, and Tailwind will end as well. Yeah, and you get to see that the Kyogre is not Choice Scarfed as well. Uh, since the Nihiligo did move before that. So definitely not in the, the best positions now for the Kyogre at least. Uh, but you do threaten down that Evelthal still with the Power Gems coming out from the Nihiligo. And that would still do very good damage into the Rillaboom if that was deciding to switch in. Uh, but really you could just switch out your Kyogre to reset the rain at this point. If you do, uh, you could be taking the attacks from the Nihiligo. Because the Nihiligo on the Christian side of the field should be outspeeding this Kyogre. It has got that Beast Boost so it should be able to do some very good damage into that Kyogre with the Power Gems and the Sludge Bomb, and that would still do a very good damage to the Tornadus if he wanted to try and reset that rain and get the Tailwind going once again. Uh, so st still definitely a strong position for Sergio coming out here. There's not really too much that's stressing down that Nihiligo. You probably do need to be relying on that Rillaboom waiting in the back to be able to deal with it, and it definitely can do that now that the Serena is knocked out on Sergio's side of the field. Well, Nihiligo on Sergio's side going first with its Beast Boost, able to pick up the KO against the Avel, so it will be returning to the Pokeball on Christian's side while getting a self another Beast Boost up, really making herself quite formidable in this match. Nihiligo on Christian's side Ooh. finally snaps out of confusion, goes for the Grass Knot into the very heavy water type Kyogre, picks up a solid KO against it with a critical hit. Huge, huge damage with the Beast Boost in play. You'll be better than me, Jamie, with those calculations about how much that critical hit mattered. Yeah, that shouldn't have mattered there with the beast boosts, especially with the life orb coming out from the Nihiligo as well. Grass Knot is not a move you see often at all on Nihiligo, but very, very clutch in this first game here. Just being able to catch that Kyogre outside of the Tailwind and just pick up the clean knockout. And now Sergio is down to just the Nihiligo and the Swinning. It's not going to be free to threaten down the Nihiligo on Christian's side of the field too much. You've got the fake out pressure joining the field once again with the Rillaboom. So yeah, really, really big turn of events there. Looked like Sergio was definitely in the stronger position if you were facing down just the classic Nihiligo of like the Meteor Beam on, and the Power Herb. You'd have probably still been able to survive a Meteor Beam if you were the Kyogre, but Grass not a perfect move choice here when you are facing down that Kyogre, being able to just pick up the clean knockout, even without any of the grassy terrain boost as well, just being able to get up the knockout there and get your fake out pressure back onto the field. Uh, so it, do it does look like it's uh, slightly in Christian's advantage, especially since you've got that fake out pressure uh, so that you can put a stop to any one of the attacks on Sergio's side of the field. Yeah, and you don't have to worry about Serena. It has already been KO'd in this game one. Sergio just going to go for the double protect, though, burning out the fake out utility of that Rillaboom. But Rillaboom not falling for it anyway. Going for the Grassy Glide to no avail. Um, but just interesting to see kind of the mindset of Christian there and where the targeting was going. Looks like the Grassy Glide was into the Nihiligo and the Nihiligo on Christian's side trying to remove that Tornadus from the fray. Yeah, you don't need to worry about the Tornadus too much at this point. So you can do some good damage to the Rillaboom, but not really too much to the Nihiligo. And it's outside of the rain as well, so that the Hurricanes aren't the most accurate that they can be. You can still get the Tailwind going, so you guarantee your own Nihiligo is going to be faster. But it really, it's going to be taking this Grassy Glide coming out from the Rillaboom at this point. It's going to be doing some very good damage to Nihiligo's really pitiful defenses. And a double up of the Grassy Glide and probably a, a Power Gem should at this point, especially with the two Beast Boosts and the fact that the Nihiligo is a Life Orb variety as well, giving that if that extra little boost uh, should be enough to pick up the knockout on the opposing Nihiligo. Really, if you're if you're on Sergio's side of the field, you probably need to be relying on something like a Hurricane Confusion again at this point. You've already managed to get one and put a stop to one of the attacks of the Nihiligo, but it's just going to be a Tailwind instead. 
Yeah, so Snorid is helping out the Nile go, ensuring it will go before the other Nile go in Tailwind. Can't do anything about the Grassy Glide, though. It has priority in Grassy Terrain. However, the Sludge Bomb is going to come out at plus two, going to be able to pick up the KO against the Rillaboom. And now it's just the Nile go on Christian's side with those single target attacks that it normally has to pick which target it would like to eliminate in this situation. Going for the Power Gem down into the opposing Nile go is going to be enough to pick up the KO against it. And I think that certainly was the right choice there from Christian because. As you mentioned earlier, Jamie, that tornado just has to rely on hitting those hurricanes outside of rain. So it does give, despite the tailwind going up on Sergio's side, a little bit of an opportunity for Christian here. Yeah, you're not really going to be doing too much damage, even if you land the hurricanes at this point. You're going to have to get so many confusions to be able to put a stop to this Nile Ego. It can just go for a power gem whenever it wants and pick up the knockout on the tornadoes. Maybe if it's a focus F variety, you've got another chance to get that hurricane confusion. But at least this one's going to hit. Yeah, I mean, worse things have happened. Uh, the confusion has gone down on Tanile Go. Whether or not it's going to activate, we have to see. Not on this particular turn. Tanile Go going for that power gem into the tornadoes. I think only a focus sash will save it here, and that's the item that has now been revealed on that opposing tornado. So, tornadoes has been able to connect one hurricane. Obviously, the life orb is going to chip away at Tanile Go as well, but that grassy terrain is still in effect, and that is not something tornadoes can benefit from. Not that it would really save it in this situation at the moment. It now just comes down to whether tornadoes can pull through or if Tanile Go can break through confusion. Yeah, well, the Hurricane's going to hit again, so probably needs two more Hurricanes at this point. The Nile does need to hit itself two more times in Confusion, and that is Ooh. one of them. So, uh, potentially, actually, with the Confusion hit on itself as well, that's kind of equivalent to the Life Orb. Uh, but probably with the Grassy Terrain Recovery, still going to be out of range of another of one of those Hurricanes. Uh, so, still need to land two of those Hurricanes, still need one more Confusion coming through from the Nile But it's definitely getting more and more likely that it will break out of that Confusion. Or if it just it keeps that confusion, it can still have a good chance of breaking through. It just needs to land one more attack into that Tornadus. There are so many dice rolls right now, it's quite scary. But I like this Protect here because, no, Nile Ego able to snap out of confusion. I was going to say, if Nile Ego was able to maybe hit itself one more time, that's a little bit more chip that possibly if Tornadus could hit the confusion, um, could sorry, could hit the um hurricane then it would be able to pick up the KO against it thanks to that little bit of extra chip but there is no confusion on that Nile Ego right now yeah it was a smart protect because if you hit the hurricane that's got no chance to reconfuse oh. the Nile Ego but at this point the hurricane is not going to be able to connect with the Nile Ego no more chances for confusion that Nile Ego is just being able to pick up the knockout on that tornadoes and take the first game for Christian yeah, I did like that end game. A little bit dicey, a little bit intense, and definitely not the way the players would like things to go with a lot of those kind of dice rolls um, to determine things, but certainly an interesting game for us to spectate. And it was lovely as well to kind of see the different ball positionings that both these players were able to utilize throughout this. We saw a lot of kind of hard switches. We saw a few U-turns here and there. Um, and it really did show that both these players, you know, this is why they're playing in the World Cup. They were starting to think those turns ahead about what they needed. And I think that Christian unfortunately lost a couple of Pokemon on the Switch, and particularly that Urshifu. Yeah, and so it, it, the Grass Knot, I think, was the biggest biggest thing coming out from that mm. game one. A really, really uncommon move choice on Nihiligo, uh, but can just really showing how clutch that move choice can be. Uh, if you didn't carry that Grass Knot, you only got access to your power gems and sludge bombs that's not going to be enough even with one of the beast boosts that the nile nigo did get it did need to be that grass knot no other move would be able to knock out that kyoga and it was the perfect move choice in that situation being able to time it perfectly the tailwind got stalled out on that turn as well so the nile nigo had the opportunity to go for that grass knot uh, so really really nice reveal for that game one but now Sergio is aware of the Grass Knot, so you'd be able to play around it a little bit safer. And maybe you do switch out that Kyogre into the Tornadus next time so that you can reset your Tailwind to get that Kyogre faster than the Nile Ego. Because uh, the Nile Ego really was the star of the show for both players there. Mm -hmm. uh, being able to put on so much offensive pressure, not being able to take too much damage from either player. Uh, really, there was the Rillaboom that could do some good damage from Christian's side of the field. The Kyogre is definitely the main way of breaking through the Nile Ego on Sergio's side of the field. But you need to really start getting yourself in Tailwind for that to happen uh, because you're not the choice scarf variety and you now know that there's grass knot on the nile ego even without the beast boost you're going to still going to take a huge chunk of damage from that grass knot uh, if you let that go off even without any of the beast boosts uh, so you do need to be getting your kyoga into that tailwind so that it can start firing off those powerful water spouts the thing nile ego like you said was a star show for both of our players and it's in a particular situation where there aren't you know any ground type pokemon here fit to have to contend with so it can essentially if you let it have some free reign on the battlefield a virtual and nile ego are going to be the pokemon coming out here for christian and on the opposing side of the field serena is out in front here just in case there were any priority shenanigans to go down and tornadus is there to either 
set up that tailwind again or possibly get some rain action going. Yeah, so just trying to stop any priority immediately with the Serena and not leading the Kyogre into that potential Rilla Boom. But Kyogre would have been a very strong lead into the available Nihiligo. Uh, if you just lead with the Tornadus Kyogre, you click Tailwind Water Spout. There's not really too much that uh, Sir Christian could do to that. So a really brave leading with that Nihiligo, but really, really strong choice because it catches the Serena as the lead instead. So even if there is a Tailwind coming out from the Tornadus, you still get to go for that Sludge Bomb into the Serena. It can do some reasonable damage to the Nihiligo because its defense is so low. Uh, but maybe that's going to be something like you U-turn instead just to pivot out into something that can make use of the Tailwind. Uh, so definitely, definitely a strong lead coming out from Christian here. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see that Serena leave the field as Tailwind is set up by that Tornadus, but Serena actually going to go straight for the Power Web, targeting down into that Nihiligo. Like you said, Jamie, oh, its wow. defenses are pitiful, picks up the solid KO against it, and that is one Pokemon that gave Sergio so much difficulty being removed very early on. A Veltal very nicely here from Christian though, being able to match that Tailwind, but at the expense of one Pokemon. Yeah, so seeing Tailwind on a Veltal, again, not very common move choice, but people do forget how strong Serena can be. It's a really, really strong physically Pokemon, and Power Up is a very strong move itself. So yeah, able to pick up just the clean knockout on the Nihiligo, just not even being a resisted hit or a super effective hit. It's just gonna be neutral, but still strong enough. So yeah, Usually, Serena, you just use it for the Queen of Majesty, but can it, it can still do some very good damage, and it will be able to do some good damage as well to this Urshifu that's come in. Uh, you do need to be worried about the Evolpal at least, and now that the Tailwinds have been matched, the Evolpal is still going to be outspeeding that Serena, uh, but you definitely freed up uh, your Kyogre in the back from those Grass Knots that could, could have come out, especially since the Evolpal was carrying Tailwind itself. You wouldn't have been able to get your Kyogre into Tailwind ahead of the opposing Nihiligo because that was matched by the Evolpal. So a really strong start coming out from Sergio being able to pick up that knockout with the Serena. Uh, the Tornado is just having that prankster ability to get that speed going so Serena could attack before the Evolpal mm. getting get that tailwind up was really crucial in being in allowing that get knockout to happen before any sludge bombs or power gems could come out that's the beauty of having the priority tailwind getting the speed up straight away so it can activate immediately for your partner pokemon sergio is going to make a switch though protecting that serena for a little bit later on bringing the rain in the form of the kyogre onto the battlefield urshfu just going to go for a protect though doesn't want to take any damage from a potential hurricane coming out from tornadus which is what sergio had gone for here with the switch doesn't have to worry about any accuracy misses a Veltal, however really like this play here from christian breaking the focus sash on that opposing tornadus and critically getting the special attack dots on both of the opposing pokemon here both special attackers pokemon that want to be able to utilize their offensive pressure have those now reduced yeah, so that's a really strong play for Christian there. They're going to be able to, to do some good damage to the Tornadus as well. The Snarl actually doing some very nice damage, even breaking that Focus Sash. Uh, definitely going to be in range of any of the attacks the Urshifu would want to go for at this point. And we know that it is carrying the Focus Sash as well, so it should be able to survive any of the attacks from the Tornadus and then still outspeed the Kyogre at this point. Uh, because if you're running the Focus Sash, you should be running Urshifu as fast as you can. And then we'll be able to pick up the knockout on that Tornadus or get some very good damage down onto the Kyogre as well. Uh, close combat would still do a very good amount of damage. Even Surging Strikes, even though it would be resisted, thanks so that rain would still do some very good damage as well. Well, Tornadus going for the Hurricane, this time no Protect, so able to bring the Urshifu right back down to its focus Sash. But like you said, if the Urshifu is nice and speedy, it will still be in a good position to deal some good damage, Ooh. but Kyogre is actually going to get in there first for the Water Spell. Does a decent chunk to the Aveltor, about ooh, just, just under a third of damage there, but critically picks up a KO against the Urshifu. And unfortunately, in this set, we really haven't been able to see Urshifu do anything so far. Snarl is going to come out again, reduce the offensive pressure of Kyogre and Tornadus a little bit further, but not pick up any KOs. It's very interesting to see that Kyogre outspeed the Urshifu, especially with that uh, item choice of Focus Sash. Uh, you would expect the Urshifu to be able to outspeed Kyogre because it is naturally faster, uh, so you would normally run it as fast as possible, but it seems like uh, Christian maybe wanted a bit more extra power on that Urshifu and sacrificed some speed so that Kyogre could still outspeed it at this point. And now the Rillaboom is going to be coming in, but you've still got that Serena just waiting in the back that could come in, put a stop to any of the fake outs, any of the grassy glides that could come out from the Rillaboom. And yeah, the Envelopal would be the, the Pokemon to be able to break through it at this point. You can still go for an Oblivion Wing to try and catch that Serena and do some good damage in that regard. And if the Rillaboom is carrying not a, not a grassy glide grass move, it'd still be able to go for that into the Kyogre in the face of a Serena switch in. You probably do want to be switching out your Tornadus at this point to get rid of those special attack drops from the Snarl and also to preserve the Tailwind coming out in the future. So Serena would be the ideal switch in in that case to be able to block any of the moves, but just going to be protecting itself here instead. 
Yep, just going straight up for a protect. We don't see any switches without Serena coming into the fray and Sergio also protecting the Kyoga here. Um, Veltor going to go for that Oblivion Wing to no avail and no matter what the Rillaboom was going for, again, we see two protects. The Rillaboom is not able to get in on out of there. You know, we talk a lot about the fake out going into the Queenly Majesty, but I think, Jamie, you make a really good point about addressing that Grassy Glide because that priority move in the terrain is there's nothing Rillaboom can do about it. It's not going to be able to utilize that if Serena goes on the field. And really trying to catch that Serena switch in as well with the Oblivion Wing and the U-turn into the Kyogre. Uh, that would have probably picked up the knockout on the Serena switch in, in that case, but just a double protect coming out from the Tornadus and the Kyogre in this case instead. So you've still got the potential now of the Serena switch in. Uh, not going for it this turn means that you've still got to worry about it for this next turn as well coming out for Christian's side of the field. So and see if they're going to predict the Serena switch in once again. Uh, Oblivion Wing and U-Turn would be very strong into that Serena switch in. But at the same time, you still need to worry about this Kyogre that's on the field. Uh, probably not going to go down to a U-Turn and Oblivion Wing, so you do need to be careful of it switching in or not. But Tornadus is going to be setting up a Tailwind instead. No switches. Is that really Boom Grassy gliding? Yes, it is. Not in the fear of a Serena switch in. Able to pick up a KO against that opposing Kyogre. Um, really great there for Christian, just making sure that, that no more water damage was coming its way. Of course, the Snarls have been helping out a lot to reduce the special attack and will also be able to get this KO against the opposing Tornado. So really good offensive pressure coming out here from Christian this turn. Yeah, always, always very brave going for a Grassy Glide in the face of a Serena switch in. And Reggie Alecki is the Pokemon of choice coming hey. out for Sergio here, as of course you like to see. But that means that there's no Nihiligo for, for Sergio coming out here, which would have been a fantastic Pokemon to bring out against the Rillaboom and the Avelful, especially when it would have been paired up with that Serena to stop any of the Grassy Glides that could come out from the Rillaboom. The Serena is going to still be stopping that. It's definitely going to be helping out the Reggie Alecki in this case. Uh, but you don't have too much offensive pressure on that Rillaboom. You do have the U-turn that could come out from the Serena. It could still carry that triple axle as well that it does, does carry, commonly carry for the Rillabooms mm -hmm. as well. Uh, so that would definitely be a way of doing some good damage to that Rillaboom. But if it's not carrying that triple axle, there's not really too much damage that can come out into this Rillaboom. And maybe if the Regieleki is carrying something like a Choice Specs that we sometimes see, that would still hurt that Rillaboom quite a lot. Yeah, just going to be the Protect from the Avelthal in the face of this Regieleki. Just going straight for a Thunderbolt, targeting down into that opposing Rillaboom, though. Just doing a little bit of chip. Ooh. Does get the Paralysis, though, and this could be critical when you know that there could be the Triple Axle coming out. Serena does manage to find its mark. We see one. We see two. Is it going to be able to find its third and most devastating kick? Yes, it does. And the combination of the Thunderbolt and the Triple Axle will remove that Rillaboom from play. Avelthal now really not looking forward to facing down this Regieleki. Yeah, Reggie Alecki is going to clean up this game at this point, so uh, it doesn't really matter that it wasn't a Nihiligo at this point. So the only important thing was that the Triple Axle did connect all three times, uh, as it does have the shaky accuracy on all of the hits at that point, and you do, do definitely want him to be getting that third and final hit, because it is the strongest, and you can see there it was strong enough in combination with that Thunderbolt to take care of the Rillaboom. And now the available is just going to get Thunderbolted at this point. It looks like we're going to be going into a game three. Yeah, Reggie Alecki just going to be able to clean up this game with a lovely Thunderbolt into that Aveltal. And, you know, Jamie, I know you were disappointed when Reggie Alecki came out. You wanted to see Nihali go, but if it wasn't for that Reggie Alecki right now, getting that little bit of chip, this wouldn't be a game three. I'm just going to credit Reggie Alecki all the way while I can. Yeah, it was, it was mainly that Serena in the end game there. The triple axle was the important part to <laughs> deal with the Rillaboom. Uh, if it wasn't Nihali go, that would have still been able to get the chip necessary for the triple axle at that point, but... Yeah, Serena was the important piece there. And even though there was a Grassy Glide into the Kyogre that could have switched into the Serena, or even the Tornez could have switched into the Serena at that point, Serena was the key Pokemon in that endgame. So preserving mm -hmm. it, not letting it have any chances of taking something like a Snarl or an Oblivion Wing on the switch and just preserving it so it could go for that Triple Axel in that endgame to be able to deal with the Rillaboom was really smart for coming out from Sergio. Yeah, and Serena at the beginning of the match as well was phenomenal with that power whip straight into the Nile Ego. So it certainly demonstrated its offensive pressure that, like you mentioned earlier, I think people sometimes tend to forget. It's just that Queenly Majesty is kind of the main thing that you think of when you think of Serena. But do not count it out for being an offensive pressure in a team as well. Yeah, we saw it knock, pick up the clean knockout on that Nile Ego, which was so crucial in that first game as well. And, and effectively picking up the KO on the Rillaboom. So doing a lot of damage uh, onto onto Christian's side of the field. So definitely a Pokemon that does need to be considered a bit more for Christian. Losing their Nihiligo on the first turn was definitely not ideal if them being able to deal with that Serena, as Nihiligo is a very strong answer to that Serena. At least if it doesn't get hit by a Power Whip, it'll be able to respond with a pretty powerful Sludge Bomb. Maybe with the Life Orb, it's going to be strong enough to knock out the Serena in one shot. So 
if you want to get the Nightly go into position to get that uh, Sludge Bomb into the Serena, you've got to protect it at least on the first turn while you're matching the Tailwinds uh, so that the Avalto can get that Tailwind up and get that Nightly go faster as well. Because if you're in the same situation, now that you know that the Serena is strong enough, you can always just go for that Protect on the Nightly go. You don't need to worry about any taunts that could come out from the Twin Ears because you're a Dark type on the Avalto, so you'd always be guaranteed to get that Tailwind up. But then at the same time, uh, you could be going, still going for a Triple Axel into the Avalto. We've seen that it does now carry that on the Serena. That would still be doing some very good damage to the available yeah it certainly would be so it's going to be interesting to see what our players are going to be leading out whether they're making any adjustments here classic combination once again though tornadoes and kyoga joining the fray and i think this is always a really solid lead if you have the opportunity to go for a tailwind and water spout but there is a really boom on the field here that is going to throw those plans into disarray paired up with the avelto yeah, it looks like we're right back to the, the game one leads and it seemed like both players knew exactly what they were doing in this situation. But now that they have seen what the opposing po uh, opposing player would do in that situation, now we've got some mind games going whether those same plays are going to happen. We saw the Serena switch in for the Kyogre on that Rillaboom, uh, potentially grassy gliding or going for those wood hammers. That'd be a very strong switch in for the Rillaboom, but being able to catch that with the Oblivion Wing in that first game, I wouldn't be doing too much to the Kyogre. And we've seen that Christian is brave enough to go for a grassy glide in the face of a Serena switch in uh, in that mm -hmm. game too as well. Could potentially be coming out here as well. And if, if you do switch into that Serena, as the Rillaboom does go for that priority attack, then you're going to be sitting in a really nice position as you just get up your Tailwind pretty much for free. But then if you don't switch in that Serena, as it does go for priority, which it is going for, you're probably Ooh. just going to lose your Kyogre. Oh, it's just able to hang on. Tornado's going to go for a hurricane here into that opposing Rillaboom. Again, doesn't mind to pick up the KO, but some big damage being dealt out by either party. Koga going for a water spout, but this is a very sad water spout. It does just a tiny little smidge of damage on both the opposing Pokemon here as Avelto is able to go for a Tailwind. And I mean, fantastic play from both these players here. The, the issue is now Sergio does have the opportunity to go for a Tailwind here and match that. But Kyogre sitting so, so vulnerable. I wouldn't be surprised to see it switch out for that Serena. Yeah, the mind game's coming into play there. You've always got the potential of the Serena switching to stop that Grassy Glide. But the Kyogre able to survive the Grassy Glide as well is very crucial. I could have potentially picked up the clean knockout on that Kyogre. But instead, not quite strong enough. And the Kyogre is able to still sit around. It can still threaten some good damage. It's no longer going to be coming from that Water Spout. And it still does have access to something like an Ice Beam or a Thunder uh, that can do good damage to the Abelkal. Almost always carries another Water type move, whether that's the Origin Pulse or Skulls. It would still be able to do some very good damage as well. I wouldn't be surprised if the Tornadus is just going to be matching that Tailwind as well for Sergio's side of the field. And it's quite nice that they were able to stall it out one turn as well, because you always want to be trying to get your Tailwind up uh, slightly stalled from your opponent so that you ha end up having the Tailwind advantage in the future. Well, Kyogre protecting in the face of this Rillaboom doesn't want to be KO'd anytime soon. As Tornadus does indeed match that Tailwind. And obviously having that Tailwind the next turn over means you will have the advantage when your opponent's Tailwind ends. Snarl coming out from the Avelto again, just trying to weaken the special attack pressure of both these Pokemon. Does a really good chunk to that opposing Tornadus and going to be reducing the pressure of those Hurricanes. Rillaboom going to get in on out of there, however, doesn't want to face one of those Hurricanes, even at reduced damage because of the weak HP that it's got. So goes for the U-turn. This does give Chris the opportunity to bring in a Pokemon from the back and something like that Nihiligo can apply some really good pressure here to both the Sergio's Pokemon. It is going to be in Tailwind as well, a match Tailwind, so the speeds are effectively at neutral for the next two turns. Uh, but that's what the Nihiligo needs when it's facing down the Kyogre. That's definitely one of the best ways of breaking through that Nihiligo on Sergio's side of the field. And really, you're going to have to start relying on that Serena that should be waiting in the back uh, in the future. But you need to get your Serena into Tailwind when the opposing Nihiligo is not to be able to be an answer to that. And the Kyogre is very low at this point. So is the Tornadus. Uh, should be in range of a knockout from either of the Evelopons of Attacks or the Nihiligo's Attacks at this point. And there's not really too much that's going to be stopping this Nihiligo from getting a Beast Boost at this point. If you switch into your Serena on the slide, Bomb that's going to be taking huge damage. If you've brought the Reggie Lecky to the game, that's going down to its focus sash at that point, or maybe just a knockout if it's not carrying the focus sash as well. So it's definitely a really strong position for this Nihiligo. Uh, really, it would need to be Sergio's own Nihiligo waiting in the back to be a switch in for that. Didn't bring it into this game two, but did bring <laughs> it to this game three. Oh, you just spoke it into existence there, Jamie. The Nihiligo joining the field on Sergio's side as well. As Protect comes out from that tornado, just doesn't want to take any unnecessary damage at this point. Nihiligo does go for the Power Gem, though, into what was the Kyogre. It would have been able to pick up the KO against it and get that Beast Boost, but instead just going to be going down into the opposing Nihiligo, doing a decent chunk of damage. The Aveltal, however, going for the Snarl, the spread move here, is going to be able to connect onto the opposing Nihiligo and reduce its special attack a little bit. So even if it does get a boost, Beast Boost, it's not going to be the end of the world at this point. 
Yeah, probably not going to be able to do enough damage to this available at this point. I'm really still not threatening down this Nihiligo at all as well. Uh, we saw how much the power gem did, and with a re reduced stage of special attack, really not going to be able to threaten the opposing Nihiligo too much at all. And this is the last turn of the match, Tailwinds, at least. You've still got one more turn, so the Nihiligo uh, so still should be able to get off one more attack. It's facing down the opposing Nihiligo and Tornadus, which won't be able to do too much damage. Uh, but if you do lose a Pokemon this turn, you'll at least be able to get a switch into the Kyogre in the Tailwind while the opposing Nihiligo would not be at that point. So maybe you are looking to lose a Pokemon this turn. It would be very mm. risky because you'd be giving the Beast Boost to the Nihiligo, uh, but you do need to be finding some way of breaking through the opposing Nihiligo on Christian's side of the field. Well, a few Protects coming around here. Players really utilizing defensive strategies to make sure their Pokemon aren't being KO'd. Taunt, interestingly enough, coming out from that opposing Tornado. So now the Nihiligo on Christian's side is not going to be able to go for those defensive strategies, not going to be able to protect, as the Nihiligo on the opposing side just able to regain a little bit of HP thanks to that grassy terrain and not having to take any damage as the Tailwind ends on Christian's side. And I really like this here because Sergio is going to have the Tailwind advantage and that Nihiligo cannot protect. Yeah, it won't be able to protect for the next few turns as well. So if you do pick up a knockout this turn with the Nihiligo to get your Beast Boost going, uh, that will allow the switch into the, the Kyogre and presumably the Serena in the back as well. You won't be able to protect from the attacks that could come out. So quite a nice taunt coming out there from the Tornadus. Uh, could have got some little, little bit of chip with the Hurricane, but probably going to be negligible at this point. As you know, your Kyogre can pick up the knockout. We've seen that Serena is strong enough to pick up the knockout as well. So just ensuring that the Nihiligo won't be able to protect from any of those attacks in the future. Definitely a strong play coming out from the Tornadoes here. And mm -hmm. we'll have to see if the available is going to be able to survive any of the attacks coming out from the Nihiligo and the Tornadoes. With that special attack drop, it may be able to set up a Tailwind, but instead it's just going to be switching out here. Yeah, bringing in the Urshifu, and I wonder if Game 3 is going to be third time lucky for this Urshifu, whether we're going to see it be able to do any sort of offensive <laughs> moves here. Hurricane, however, going to come down, bring it right down to its focus dash, and if Sergio has decided to double up into it with that um, Nile Ego, then it will be removed from the fray as quickly as it has joined. And poor Urshifu, it's just not your set today, but it does give Chris the opportunity to have that kind of sacrifice switch you can now bring in a pokemon from the back but i think unfortunately giving that nihiligo the beast boost bringing it back up to neutral could be dangerous beast boost however is also going to happen for the nihiligo on christian side as it picks up a ko against that tornadoes with the power gem that's definitely the pokemon you want to be picking up the knockout on as the tailwind will be running out on sergio's side of the fields you've got no way of resetting that tailwind and you've still preserved your available in the back so you can set up your own tailwind in the future and at this point you don't, probably don't even need to and the Nihiligo is going to be outspeeding the Kyogre and the Serena waiting in the back for the rest of the game at this point and with the beast boost that you've got from the Tornadus you're going to be able to pick up the knockout on the Serena with the Sludge Bomb even if it's carrying the Assault Vest at this point point. the Kyogre has taken a huge amount of damage and even if it wasn't carrying Grass Knot would be in range of any of the attacks coming out from the Nihiligo as well the Nihiligo on Sergio's side of the field still has that Snarl Drop on it so uh, it's, it's going to be at least uh, reduced back uh, back up to neutral thanks to that beast boost from Kayon. That's mm -hmm. pretty useless Urshifu at this point, uh, but yeah, not going to be able to do too much damage to the opposing Nihiligo. It's going to take a few power gems to be able to break through it, so really Christian just needs to target down that not Nihiligo slot uh, with a few sludge bombs, pick up the knockout on the Serena, pick up the knockout on the Kyogre at this point. So the Evolve can go for a, a Snarl to reduce the Nihiligo down even further, or a Tailwind so that it can outspeed that Nihiligo. Guarantee you're winning the speed ties at least with an opposing Nihiligo, so you can go for a Power Gem into it at this point. It de definitely looks like this Nihiligo is definitely in the position it wants to be in to, to steamroll through the rest of this game. Yeah, and we've seen how pivotal that Nihiligo can be from game one as well, particularly when you get those beast boosts rolling, then you can really start dealing out some formidable damage. Um, the Nihiligo, however, oh. on Sergio's side, is going to literally take the words from my mouth and be like, hey, I've got a plan, and does bring all of those stat changes away from the Nihiligo on Christian's side. Nice. So the Sludge Bomb, not going to be able to pick up the KO against that Serena. However, it will be able to get that poison, essentially putting a timer on that Serena. A Vettel is going to be able to go to the tail and boost up the speed, meaning the Nihiligo on Christian side it's going to be able to go faster um, however power whip is going to come out and we've seen how much damage this can do Nihiligo is not going to be able to survive that at all oh those are my words and I am eating them so yeah that <laughs> Nihiligo has been completely dealt with that clear smog very smart there mm. to be able to get rid of that beast boost the beast boost would have allowed that uh, Nihiligo to be able to knock out that Serena uh, which does appear to be carrying the assault vest at this point it would have needed to have that to be able to survive that life orb sludge bomb uh, and able to survive that at neutral, very key, allowing it to pick up the knockout on that Nihiligo. Uh, you have got the Tailwind set up on Christian's side of the field at this point. So now the Rillaboom and the Available are going to be outspeeding the opposing Nihiligo. 
it doesn't really matter too much if you're the Rillaboom, you can still go for the Grassy Glides once you've dealt with that Serena uh, to be able to knock out the Nile Ego. And if it's carrying one of those other Grass moves, this is the time to go for it into the opposing Nile Ego. With the Grass Terrain Boost, should still be able to pick up the knockout at this point. And Snarl is definitely going to help with that. Yeah, it certainly is going to be able to. And you can see here Nile Ego having a special attack drop again you know just really negating some of the offensive pressure Rillaboom going for the wood hammer though when Serena's on the field you can't go for those priorities so the wood hammer is going to crash down into Nihiligo and remove it from the fray Rillaboom obviously taking its little bit of recoil going to get a little bit of HP back but certainly a very devastating turn there for Christian yeah and so the Kyogre's just going to come in in the face of the Rillaboom even if it wasn't mm. in tailwind at this point there's still some grassy terrain there for a grassy glide to be able to pick up the knockout so yeah, it's definitely, a, definitely an a interesting turn of events there. Uh, the clear smog, not quite enough for Sergio to be able to claw back into this game. Uh, and Nihiligo did seem like it was the main Pokemon for both players' side of yes. the field. Some re really clutch uh, clutch move choices there. The clear smog was really cool to allow that Serena to survive, but not quite enough. The grass knot was very crucial as well. Uh, the grass glide just going to be able to pick up the knockout on that Kyogre and take the game for Christian and Austria. Exactly. We've got our KO here and Christian is going to be able to take this set. And I've honestly been so impressed with the way both these players were able to play it. That's Serena as well coming in, throwing up such difficulty and protecting the Kyogre so well. But in that game three, Christian was just able to, you know, make these braver plays, going for that grassy glide very early on into the Kyogre as well and really negating the damage the water spout could deal, I think was an excellent way to start setting up for that end game. Yeah, you've always got those mind games there. Uh, we saw in the game one, both players' plans, like for the, uh, the matchups, you could see that they had both come in uh, with a game plan against the opposing team. Uh, but then in that game three, you know what it's going to be. You've got the mind games going, and Christian got the better end of that. Being able to catch the Kyogre with the Grassy Glide with no Serena switch, it meant that we got a very sad water spout instead of a very, very powerful <laughs> one. And yeah, it just seemed like it was really Nihiligo's game. Uh, both players uh, bring Nihiligo to the match, both having some really cool move choices. We don't see Clear Smog too often. We don't see Grass Knot really at all. And, mm -hmm. and both being very, very clutch there. Uh, Clear Smog, the only real way to get any sort of get, uh, clutch back into the game for Sergio, but not quite enough. And the Grass Knot just being absolutely crucial in that game one. Yeah, absolutely devastating the amount of damage that it could deal. And, you know, Nihiligo possibly is a Pokemon that we need to be watching out for more on these teams. You know, again, Nihiligo often fell off a little bit when there were a lot of those ground types around because we've already talked about how pitiful its defenses are. It doesn't want to take any ground type moves at all from those physical attackers. But particularly when you're in a scenario where it doesn't have to worry about those so much, it can really capitalize, um, particularly in a Tailwind environment, start picking up some very strong KOs. Yeah, so another fantastic game coming out here for this coverage today. We're going to be jumping into a short break and we'll be right back with another fantastic game.